Hey guys, and welcome back to Nomi Factory. Potentially the last episode? I'm not sure yet. <laughs> we'll see how far we can get today. But in the last episode, we did get our creative mill crafted. We also were able to pick up two energy sources, one of which is on our power ball. Still have over a year to fill on this thing. So yeah, at this point in the game, it's really all just about getting the creatives crafted. Oops, I did not want to do that. <laughs> we have to be careful, these things are still on. Maybe we break the controllers first. It's still spinning, wait, how is that? Turbine. <laughs> Maybe we just destruction gadget this, we don't need any of this anymore since we have the energy cell. Wait, are these still sp <laughs> They're still spinning here, what is going on? <laughs> oh no way. Do we even have a way to get over here is the thing. <laughs> yeah, we, uh, well I guess we can walk along the conduits. Oh boy, that is embarrassing. Wait, we don't even have a way to get down to our terminals either, do we? Unless we maybe jump down here, yeah. Oh, there's not a wire through there. I think Slash Home has us covered here. And then maybe we pillar over. What a flawless start to this. Oh wait, I've still got this, some of the armor on. Oh, it's a shame we didn't have Soulbound on the chest piece. We can't fly. Yeah, what an absolutely flawless start to this episode. <laughs> Alright, don't fall, don't fall. Yeah, see, nothing ever happened there. Ignore the death marker. Nothing happened. <laughs> so I'm thinking that this episode is going to be much more of a progress update type of style. I've got a lot of grinding to do and it's going to be very monotonous. Lots more of the same thing to get to vending. But that's the reality of the very end game here. I'm definitely up for a grind. I hope that I didn't overestimate how close we are to vending either. And so hopefully this video has a satisfying payoff. We'll see how long it takes us though. We're currently on 8 days 19 hours. Which is quite long actually. We've sacrificed quite a lot of time in the last week. So just to initially establish where we're at, this is currently our progress towards Vendon, plus a creative mill that's up there, and another energy source that's on our energy ball. But yeah, as you can see, we're missing quite a bit here. Um, maybe we bit off more than we can chew here? I don't know. Alright, so kicking things off today, I decided to clean up that little area down there, the last of the cobble platform, besides our terminals, which I think we'll get to. But yeah, we just have passive charge service, which can now be done in the energetic infuser. We probably should have switched this process over quite a while ago. We got flux production, we still need this, as I would quite like to make some upgrades to our applied energetics crafting CPUs. We also got the AE processors set up in exactly the same way, it's just a slightly different configuration of the blocks. And we also got one more assembly line, mainly just to handle all of the tier 9 circuits that we need. These things are super, super slow to craft, even at UV or max tier, which is what we've got them running at. And I did switch out all of these energy hatches, I believe, to max. Now that we have the energy source, we can afford to basically spend as much power as we need. There is one thing I want to do very early this episode, and that is correct red coal. As you can see, it takes, I think it's 41,000 for one of the creative items. Yep, it's 41,000 for one of these energy sources, and we need four of them, I think. So it's not quite as much red coal as I thought last episode, but still a lot. So because of that, I'm going to add some extra speed upgrades. Now that we got the creative mill, we can afford to go basically as high as we want with these things. Yeah, that should mean that we're not caught out with this thing endgame. I've also just been requesting some more tier 9s and 10s. That kind of goes without saying at this point. I've actually got a little timer set next to me uh, for every 10 minutes just to request more microminers. <laughs> so yeah, we want to basically keep up as much production of that as we can. The next thing though is, I guess we remove these terminals, that's almost the last thing we have to do, apart from that situation over there. We're gonna wait until we have enough leather though. We may still need a couple more thousand leather. Actually, before we touch the terminals, we do have to look at nether quartz. You may remember I brought this up last time and I think we calculated this out that it's maxed out. And all of this is being used for pulsating polymer clay here. The two other drawers that we had laying about, I don't know where exactly I put those things. It's in one of these towers somewhere. <laughs> where are those drawers? I'm not sure, but I checked them a second ago and they were empty. So I think we're going to have to rebuild quartz in some sort of a processing array over here. Maybe need two, one for solidified glass and then electrolyzed into nether quartz. Yeah, something a little bit like this. I'm sure you guys understand what's going on by now. 
So we've set up so many of these things. So yeah, we're solidifying glass, sending that via laser. We can give this some IV electrolyzers, and this will output us super, super quick nether quartz. Let's give it a drawer and some drawer upgrades. Perfect. Wait a second, don't tell me this is all being used as well. Why are we not buffering any? <laughs> where is this all going? I don't understand where this is all being used. Uh, maybe I'll give it a little while, see if this drawer fills. Alright, so sometime later, and we got another PA here for nether quartz. So that's what, three setups now for nether quartz? And only now are we starting to fill this thing. Yeah, this is 800k. And just as a little update here, I have been sending lots and lots of microminers, and I think we can craft another few creatives now. Let's go ahead and request our energy cell. We got an error with 80. <laughs> Wait, maybe we have to do this. Yeah, there we go, okay. And you know what, I think it's time for all of these guys to have a more permanent location for the end of the game. I didn't actually realize one was trapped over there at the farm. Let's see if we can find the rest of them here. That's two, that's three, that's four, five chicken. Chicken number seven. Another one hidden next to our blast furnaces. I do hear another one somewhere. Aha, I found him. He's still on top of this cable here. And you know what, I think I've got the perfect location for these guys. Check this out. <laughs> oh yes, this is perfect. This is the perfect addition to our base right here. Oh, I love it. And we can even put them inside. I got a little area prepared underneath. We got some trap doors, <laughs> some ineffable glass. We already got one of these guys in here. All right, that is a lot of chicken. Yep, we got all these guys here as well. And here they shall remain. Wait, don't suffocate. <laughs> Along with this little sheep here who wishes he was a chicken. All right, anyways, that's enough chicken. <laughs> Back to the grind here. Alright, so herein begins the one of the most tedious parts of this pack, which is all of the Infinity Armor. Even just taking a tiny little peek at these Infinity Armor recipes. Let's take for example the helmet. Not only do we have both Draconic sets here to craft, we have to craft two Wyvern it looks like, we also have the ultimate stuff. And the ultimate set is made from the left and right pieces along with the middle. And all of this is made of like, I don't know how many of these. <laughs> and it basically just keeps going, yeah, you've got a left and right piece. And then various different armor sets after that. Yeah, look at this. Some of it is even extended crafting. And that applies to every single piece of armor. Yeah, I'm going to move these terminals later on, I think. Let's uh, <laughs> let's start encoding some stuff right now. Let's clear our pin screens. So I got some extra extended crafting tables just dedicated to the armor sets. I hope this works when we import it from GAI here. Just because of the charge on the Draconic set. We'll see. Although I'm thinking that these table types can't be connected here like this. Apparently the recipe doesn't show up. Maybe just because we have different recipes in both of these packagers. Let's try to connect them up separately here. Uh, wait a minute, no, I think it's just because I placed packagers here instead of unpackagers. So now the recipe should show up. Yes, there we go. Okay, let's see exactly what we're missing here for each one. Couple more dragon hearts. That's gonna be some more tears. Oh no. And this is only the helmet as well. <laughs> uh, okay. Let's start with the easy stuff, all the stuff we can just encode through AE. Like for example, the weather crystal. We should be making all of these things already. The manual and helmet. I think we'll- oh, we're already out of patterns here. Yeah, the manual and armor set, we might as well do all of them since I know we need them all for infinity. Leggings and the boots. The Ardite set. I don't know if we have all of these plate recipes, I guess we're gonna find out. I don't think we make Ardite plates anywhere. Next we have the cobalt set. The lapis set. Oh, that's a funny looking plate. We need tar for this, which is smelting rubber. But yeah, we can do that. I hope we have enough space for all these patterns as well. I mean, yeah, we, yeah, this should be, this should definitely be enough space. All right, next up is the end steel set. I don't think we make guardian diodes anymore, so we'll have to set up a slicing splice. Same for the chest piece, leggings, and boots. The dark steel set should be fairly easy. This is just dark steel ingots. The obsidian set, of course, is an extended crafting recipe. All right, we also got the redstone set and the carbon plated set. But that, of course, was only the initial round of recipes, not to mention the fact that we have also the bow and the sword, I think, of Infinity. But the weapons, I think we do another time. Um, let's see exactly what else we're missing here. Okay, some more guardian skills. We should just be able to adjust this level of matter here at DML. Let's buffer instead 6,000 of these things. Yeah. There's also Cinnabar. How are we supposed to get Cinnabar? Oh, we can buy it. Okay. <laughs> let's just buy it all. Done. 
and we'll set up an ore to gem recipe here in the multi smelter. All right, let's take care of all these plates. I think these are all just going to be cut and machine recipes. And this heat lantern is just a crafting table recipe. Oh, and it looks like we've missed an armor set here. We need the night slime. I'm not sure where this came from, but it shows up in the craft, so I guess we encode it. We should have night slime automated already. Somehow we missed a lapis set, the emerald set, another extended crafting recipe, and I think we've got the infused lava set as well, which is another extended craft. Uh, we may have to add some more unpackagers and recipe types. So we have to somehow also make lava obsidian, or what is it called? Lava infused obsidian? Lava and obsidian in a chemical reactor. It's gonna look something like this. Okay, so we're just missing the Draconic Evolution set, which is just gonna be a matter of encoding some recipes here. I don't think anything here is gonna catch us out. However, we are also missing these enticing crystals, which means a soul binder with villager soul vials, and also guardian diodes, which is the slice and splice. Alright, so after some automation and some more hours of sending microminers, I've done some cleanup around the base as well. I realised that we can remove this line. This used to be our old input line from the Nequada reactors. I did actually set us up a new space here for the terminals, nothing too fancy right now. This is just to get us to the end of the game so that we can remove the cobble platform from under there. Although we still kept our little grass block there, I don't know if you can see that. But yeah, just next to our other soul binders and things, we have the guardian diodes. And on the opposite side, we have the enticing crystals, which does take villager soul vials. I think you have to craft these, which is why I had to add another extra row on top of these things. Anyways, if I'm not wrong, I think we can get the infinity chest piece. The most expensive one by far. Look at how expensive this is. <laughs> this is 12 hearts of the universe just for this one armor set. Yeah, 800 ultimate material. I started pre-crafting some of this stuff. We got the draconic set encoded. Hopefully that is able to craft without any problems. Yeah, this is a massive craft right here. Let's do this. Ah, it looks like we are stuck here on the Draconic set. I think it's an issue with Package Dotto though and not AE since it did actually manage to craft the Draconic chest plate. It just doesn't recognise it in this recipe here. So if we disable these flux capacitors, I don't want this to charge. <laughs> Let's just put them all away actually. Yeah, if we pick up this Draconic set, hopefully it doesn't put NVT data on it. And we switch out the extended crafting recipe with the real one. And now if we request it again, it does actually finish in AE, but we should make sure to pick up uh, Infinity and get first. This should be two quests here. Can we fly with this thing? Oh yes. I don't know if I like it with the glitch set. Maybe we need to fill out the full set. Of course we do, right? <laughs> but that is a lot more microminers. That, that is many, many more hours of me sitting here sending microminers. But we can actually add one more item into our progress here for a creative vending. The creative energy cell actually finished crafting. One of them at least. Which it looks like it goes here, right? We only need two of these things to finish this out. But let's not get too excited just yet with our one infinity piece. To get our vending upgrade, we still need four creative storage upgrades, 28 infinity ingots, four creative RF sources, four creative energy cells, one creative cell, four creative energy storages, six infinity solar panels, four creative drums, four creative jetpacks, three creative mills, one sort of the cosmos, four creative flux capacitors, one pair of infinity boots, a set of infinity leggings, and one infinity helmet. So yeah. Lots and lots of crafting to do. Let's get started. And I think we'll immediately start this off with another 100 tier 8 microminers for 400 chaos shards. Maybe not. <laughs> oh, applied energistics, please. There we go. We got it. It's crafted. But yeah, I think we're going to start to work on this flux capacitor right here. This does take more power storages, and I think Lapidron crystals are going to be a significant bottleneck that we have. And apparently stabilized uranium. I thought we had this already. Yeah, it is definitely all of this lapis that we need right here. And there's a lot more power storages that we need for the other creatives as well. After doing some more digging, I found that the source of the bottleneck was actually Ruby. So I did end up buying a bunch of that thing and also sent around 100 tier 3 exquisite missions. And all of the Ruby we send through ore processing, which is part of the reason why it's still there, just for rare occasions like this. I also beefed up the crystal CPU production and added another processing array for the laser engraver step which then just basically pushed the bottleneck over to the mixer. So yeah, processing array for this as well. <laughs> Did 
this thing is crazy. Look at this. <laughs> so many energy crystals, that's amazing. Oh yes, I love it, I love it. Yeah, now this thing is working at more uptime. There's less downtime. <laughs> still not perfect, still not perfect, but we need thousands and thousands of these things. Yeah, it's a very long, complicated chain between the crafters, those machines, the processing arrays, and also our microminers as well. And probably the chickens have something to do with it. If I'm not wrong though, we can also request our next infinity piece, the infinity boots. Let's get these things crafted. This is much, much cheaper than the chess piece. Only one heart of a universe for this. And we're going to have to manually change out the recipe here for these draconic boots. As I suspected, there is some NBT. I had to do this for the chess piece as well. And I think it's going to apply for these leggings and the helmet. I assume just because of the charge on these things. A lot of the stuff has been fixed though. You've done an amazing job, Exos, so thank you. <laughs> it's a lot less hassle than last time. But yeah, it looks like draconic boots still have to be changed out manually here. Let's grab our quest before we complete the craft. And if we request again, it should end up finishing this thing. I don't know which crafting table it's going to be in. I highly doubt we can catch it here. Our second piece of infinity armor. Wow, we have, we're really quick now. We're zipping about this place. Awesome. Oh, and we get the jump boost. All right, so the flux capacitor, the one we wanted to work on, I think is just waiting on Lapatron. Yeah, so in theory, we can actually craft the rest of this. So yeah, I want to continue down the vending list and try to get everything in our AE system so that we can request it. Even though we don't have the materials for everything yet, we still have to encode the jetpack, which is, uh, yeah. This is basically every tier of jetpack and it goes all the way down. It looks like this also has the flux capacitors in their recipe. Oh, and the dark solarium. Oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> Wait, I think most of the stuff we have, right? Thrusters we have on passive. The angel ring, I'm not sure how bad this is. Ah, that looks not too bad, honestly. As long as we, as long as we have the jetpacks, which we have to encode anyway. Yeah, this is going to be a lot of recipe encoding. And then the watering can, I don't think is going to be quite as bad. Yeah, this one is this one is very easy, as long as we have the heart of the universe for the infinity catalyst. I guess you'll join me in a couple of hours. I'm going to encode some stuff. See where we can get to. Oh yeah, this certainly was a lot of recipes to encode. But I want to take a minute just to address GTNH. I've had a lot of people asking me about this series, and uh, yeah. So back just over a month ago when we started Nomi Factory, I did fully intend to play GTNH alongside this pack. But honestly, I got really, really hooked on Nomi Factory. It's, it's such a good pack, especially in the early game. I did try to get some things recorded in NH when I was playing Nomi Factory. It just didn't lead to a very good video, honestly. Especially when you get to the point in the pack we were at, like around LUV. LUV or ZPM, basically pre-fusion, there is a lot of scale and infrastructure. A bit like the situation we're in right now, except it's going to be like that for hundreds of episodes still. <laughs> and when there's no clear end in sight and things are so complex in GTNH already, I would imagine from a, a viewer's perspective it's quite hard to follow, especially if you're not also playing the pack yourself. So I did make a post on Discord, a lot of you guys would have seen that already. But yeah, once Nomi Factory finishes, I still don't know if we can finish it this episode, honestly. <laughs> There's still so much to do here. But yeah, once we wrap this up, I'm going to extend the break on GTNH. Of course, we still have the server in the world. We may end up re revisiting that pack, but just for now, I'm going to extend the break on that. And we'll move on to something else after Nomi Factory. If you guys came here for Greg Tech or GTNH specifically, then maybe there'll be some things in the future. But yeah, I just want to take this opportunity just to thank all of you for all the support you've shown over this series and all of the previous. I hope you'll also consider joining me on the on the next pack, on the next adventure. Alright, anyways, getting back into things here, we have some bottlenecks to address here. But before we do, let's request our infinity helmet. I really want to pick up the night vision from this. And it should be finished crafting any second now, but we're back in the overworld. We haven't been here for a while. This is definitely not a very efficient staircase on the way down to bedrock here. But we are here because of Grains of Infinity. Yes, this is one of our bottlenecks here, trying to get all the microminers. This little setup here we've had since, I think it was episode 2 I set this up actually. But this is definitely not going to cut it anymore. So I made up some fire water with the vat. This is why we need our night vision. I wonder if it's finished yet. Oh, this is coming together nicely. <laughs> That looks cool. Has it always been red on the inside? I don't remember that, honestly. It didn't used to be like this, right? It's, it's been so long since I've had this armor set, though. That is what I was hoping to avoid here as well. All this lava. Are we immune to lava? Kind of. I mean, we're not taking any damage, so I, I guess we are. And I know what you might be thinking. There is also a Microminer mission that can help us get Grains of Infinity. We just voided some diamonds there. <laughs> 
Yeah, there is the micro miner route, which I did send a couple hundred of. I think I sent like 200 of those things. It's just nowhere near as consistent. Plus, right here, we can get away from some of the chickens and we can dig a little hole. <laughs> so we're using the firewar instead of pyrothium, just because this can produce the grains straight out of the liquid. It doesn't rely on the fact that the bedrock has to be on fire. So we don't need any of the nether rack or anything. So I think it was white, red, white or ender chest had to be on. We just need our bucket of fire water, the vacuum chest above, and I am conduit into the chest here. You know, it's difficult to judge. Is this going to be enough? I may have to come back and add more later. We'll see how we get on with this though. So we do also have six more processing arrays added here. Can't seem to get enough of these things, but yeah, we have tier fours and tier five circuits being made here. I realized that we had almost completely run out of tier fours and the crystal socks in here as well to make the tier five since we increased the speed of this process. These three on the end here are just for symmetry, just to balance out the look here. <laughs> so in terms of the recipe encoding, I think we got everything in the vending upgrade. I spent a couple of hours last night. We're actually on day three of me recording this video. Or is it day four? At this point, I'm hallucinating microminers. <laughs> I've honestly sent so many microminer missions at this point. But yeah, check this out. We got our creative jetpack. I think we need two of these things. Oh, we need four of these things. Okay, which goes here. I think we can also request a watering can. This is by far the easiest one. The heart of the universe and 16 chaos shards is really the only cost involved. I think we may also be able to pick up a flux capacitor or maybe not. Oh, the recipes. Oh, the recipes. <laughs> the NBT data. I have to fix that. All right, got the NBT that I'll fixed up. I think we can request this flux capacitor now. Awesome, and we got our watering can. One of the creative drums is also finished. This is also a relatively cheap thing to build. The watering can is somewhere in the middle here. Creative drum underneath the RF source. Oh yeah, here it is. This is the flux capacitor finishing up here. Just out of curiosity, how much Lapatron crystals are we on now? 33,000. Nice, I like that a lot. It looks kind of snazzy actually with the blue pants on as well, with the blue leggings. I'm actually a fan of this combination. Oh no, the recipe got stuck. Oh, NBT data, please. <laughs> oh, I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to change that out. Yeah, we have to cancel this. All right, restarting a second time. Is it gonna finish the craft? Haha, we got our first creative flux capacitor. Nice. Which can go here. All right, so I think from here, I'm gonna try to finish out these creative RF sources. Probably one of the longest crafts because it takes all of these ultimate generators plus all of these reactor stabilizers, which is a lot of chaotic fusion. And we have two right now, so we need four more of these things. Uh, yeah, this is a long material list right here. <laughs> Some sentient enders and probably a lot of hearts of the universe. Oh, just one. Just one heart of the universe. That's not too bad. Either way, it looks like I've got a lot more optimizations to do. Okay, hold on. Now that is just... <laughs> oh, I completely forgot there was live wire over there. Well, it's time for another angel ring. <laughs> oh my goodness. That was an absolute fail there. Okay, before we do anything here, let's break this piece of wire. Make sure we don't lose any of our items off the edge. Alright, we got the infinity armor back. That's the most important part, by far. <laughs>
And with that, that almost marks the 24 hours played since the start of this episode. And still, the end doesn't look like it's in sight yet. <laughs> there is so many more resources we need, but this is our current progress for Venden. Oh yeah, plus one more creative RF, which I think means that we have all of these creative RFs now. We have one in use in world, and we need the sixth one for this slot right here. But yeah, slowly but surely, this thing is getting filled out here. Biggest cost for sure is definitely going to be these solar panels. This is so many chaos shards right here. Yeah, for six of these things, it's 8,000, nearly 9,000 dragon hearts. 3,000 chaos shards just for this. I don't know how many chaos shards we've spent today. <laughs> this is absolutely insane. Yeah, this is probably going to be like... Oh yeah, look at this. 217 hearts of universe. That's just crazy. Like, the amount that we've spent already is just insane. And we still need more. But yeah, we got more processing array additions. More soul binders. More fluid solidifiers. Always more fluid solidifiers. I cleaned up some of the wire in here as well, got some facades on these cables. I think it's looking not too bad now with our machine towers. But I think we can end off this session here with the infinity leggings. I'm pretty sure we can afford these things now. Yes, perfect. Did the eyes change as well? I think we got the full set here because the eyes changed. The next day I got straight to work tackling our bottlenecks head on. One of those being dragon layer data from the Enderman models. Every tier 7 mission takes 4 stacks so we go through a lot of this stuff. I decided it wouldn't be a bad idea to invest two of our hearts of the universe into two more supercomputers. But the first one we did actually use for Enderman data models. Since we can get impossible realm data from this, the realm data we can use on its own to make quantum flux, also used in the micro miners, and we can also turn the excess into dragon layer data. Plus we used the Enderman models to make a lot of emeralds, which we use quite a lot these days, so it's not going to hurt to have some extra Enderman models laying around. But since we used the first one for the Enderman, that meant building a third supercomputer, this time for the Dragon models. It does feel really painful to spend a full heart of the universe on these things, but I think in the long run we're going to benefit from this. At least I hope so. It was really hard to tell if this would be sufficient or not, similar to the Grains of Infinity, which actually turned out not to be, but I thought I would leave this for a couple of hours and go dig some more holes down at Bedrock. I think we got the Grains production more or less doubled from what we had earlier in the episode. All those gears take a lot of Grains of Infinity. We also at this point had some spare hearts of the universe, so I picked up another creative jetpack. It doesn't feel like much when you're only crafting one item every few hours, but every little bit helps with this vending upgrade. <laughs> also able at this point to pick up another flux capacitor as well. I added some speed upgrades to various crafters around the base, just trying to catch out every little bottleneck, but that basically just meant kicking the can down the road and moving it onto another machine. <laughs> it was basically like this all afternoon. And how could it be a session of Nomi Factory without some more processing arrays? I managed to nestle a little space in here for tier 3 circuits, I upgraded the stem cells, wetware production, platinum plates and foil, lava crystals also got an upgrade, and I fixed some of the bottlenecks around our alloy smellers. All just trying to squeeze out every optimization that we can out of this base. The robot as I'm called, the chicken robot, yeah. <laughs> oh man, that is a lot of processing arrays. Way more than I first planned for. Alright, and we are making some progress here, making some slow and steady progress. Ignore this sign right here, that's just a reminder for myself. <laughs> but there is our flux capacitor to add to our craft. And we got three more creative drums, I think this is the last three. Uh, which go here, here and here. Yeah. Let's see if we can get the Sword of the Cosmos at this point. It would be really nice to complete out the armor set. Okay, we're four hearts of a universe away. How many tier 10s can we? Can we get four of these things? We can get four of these things, wow. I'm surprised every time I go for a craft and we can actually manage, yeah. <laughs> oh, and look at this, we built up 124 data. That basically equals four times the amount of chaos shards, so long as we have the tier 8 missions to send them. And our supercomputers seem to be paying off, we are now buffering excess dragon layer data, meaning that we make more than we send through the microminer missions, which is a very, very good sign. But yeah, honestly, I'm not sure exactly where our bottlenecks lie now. With some of the upgrades that we have to these processing arrays, I added this level amount here just to make sure we could keep some stem cells, since these are also used in neural processing units, which are in these assembly lines, which have now been upgraded to max tier, all of them. Yeah, looks like we're struggling here for more tier 7s. I think that's because of, yeah, more fuel generators LUV. I've been chasing these things all afternoon, like, <laughs> we never seem to have any of these things. I think it's just because of wetware production though, right? I think it's these level emitters disabling it. 
because of these wetware circuits, so I may have to add a third PA for wetwares. We'll see about that, we'll see. Might as well also spend all of this data as well. Can we get 124 of these tier 8 missions? Oh my goodness, we can. Another 100 tier 8s just like that, easy. No, it's been a while since I've been able to do that though. And I've still got this little timer going from the start of the episode every 10 minutes. <laughs> like clockwork. The clock certainly does work indeed, we are on day 5 of this video being recorded, so yeah apologies for it being a bit late. <laughs> this is a massive project to undertake, however we did get our Sword of the Cosmos crafted. Not that we can do anything with it though, we're just holding it here. That's gonna go right in the centre of this craft. So we also have these 4 creative energy cells, let's see if we can get these as well. All 4 at once, what are the chances? Wow. Alright, this is gonna be huge. <laughs> There is so- oh yeah, that's gonna be a lot of extended crafting, look at all this stuff. Yeah, 12 max batteries, yeah, that is, those are no joke. And I guess I should probably mention the PA wall grows once again, this time for dilithium dust. We also got ASOC waivers, tier 3 circuits, and more wetwares. But you know what, the end is actually looking like it's gonna be in sight here. We, we really don't have that much to go, right? I mean, we have the armour pieces here. We need all of these infinity ingots around the edge, which is a heart of the universe each. And then it's the thing I'm least looking forward to. This is probably going to take a full day of crafting. These six solar panels. Yeah, we are nowhere near this thing. <laughs> we are nowhere... Yeah, I'm going to save this for last, I think. Some of these are just buffer issues. Like, for example, dragon scales. Let's increase the buffer on the dragon scales. Let's take it up to 100,000, I think. Guardian scales. Let's also take these up to maybe 60,000 for these. 70,000, since I hit 7 instead of 6. With our bones, we need lots and lots of these things. 140,000? Yeah, let's just add a zero. <laughs> I think we have some more on this side as well, yeah. And then, other than that, it's some hearts of the universe. Uh, Chaos shards, 3,000 Chaos shards. Motes of Omnium. Hmm, Motes of Omnium should already be on passive, right? We can fluid solidify these, I'm sure. Yes, it looks like our droid right here is maxed out. Then, is there anything else here? Ender stars? Oh, no, dragon hearts, that's just some more tier 7 missions. Ender stars, though, we do make these in one of these machines here. Where are you, Ender Stars? I wish there was an easier way to find these things, but I don't think there is. <laughs> Wait, maybe it's in a process in a way. I think it might be. Aha, it's here. I must have passed this about 10 times already. <laughs> here we are right here. Let's add a drawer upgrade. Might as well max it out. This is basically free for us. How's the energy cells doing? Oh yeah, we've still got a while. We've still got, like, probably an hour. An hour to craft for these things? I guess I got more chaos shard grinding to do. Let's do this. And you know what, I'm actually surprised every time I go to check bottlenecks, there's actually some things that I missed around the base. Just some random conduits or setting outputs or maxing out drawers, things like that. But we are so committed at this point that we have to get vending, right? It's a bit like the tank episode. And as the sun rises, we're waiting on Applied Energistics crafting the last few items for our next flux capacitor. That leaves us missing only one of these things. Yep, lots and lots of assembly line crafts, but at this point it's not really worth adding more, since overall it's really the chaos shards that we're waiting on. But wait, what is this thing? Activate for joy, should we press it? <laughs> if that doesn't make you smile, I don't know what does. A lot of you guys would probably recognise that little tune. It's not perfect either, this is my first ever time playing with note blocks. But yeah, I thought I would uh, try something out here, a little bit different. This one here is wrong, I think. Yeah, we have it copied over twice here just to play on both octaves. But honestly, I don't really know what I'm doing with these things. <laughs> I'm just having some fun. But yeah, this block right here was the wrong wrong note. I think we've got this one. Yeah, we've got this one playing an A. 
Let's try an E. It's close. No, this one's still wrong. <laughs> I don't know what this note has to be. Well, let's fill in another piece of this puzzle. There's a flux capacitor finished. And right around 15 minutes after that, we got our first creative energy source. And shortly after that, we got the last creative jetpack crafted, which goes here. And another two hours later on, things should start to feel more real now with this last craft. Yep, here he is, any second. Come on, Infinity Ingot. <laughs> yes, we got all 28 for the outsides of this craft. Now it's starting to feel a bit more complete. And I was hoping to avoid this, but I think we're going to have to overhaul ore processing. Oh, we're so close, but I think it's going to be necessary. I think, yeah. Things are just getting way, way too backed up in, this, in these chests right here. Alright, there we have it. We just have to connect this all back up again. Exactly the same filler and system that we had, which is why I rebuilt it in place. Only this time we now have PAs to process all the ores. Yeah, need a laser right here as well. Inputs to inputs. Nice. And another two hours has went past. We can pick up our second, yeah, second creative mill. I don't even know where this goes. <laughs> here? No, here. And 30 minutes later, we should have our last flux capacitor. Any sec, there we go. <laughs> That's the last one, that goes right there. And over three hours later, with this is now day six, actually, of this massive project. <laughs> I've really, really been trying hard to hammer out all the bottlenecks. Uh, let's just add some extract speeds to this thing. I also switched out one of our supercomputers over to Wither, just so we can get more Wither bones. We have plenty of Endermen by now. We also have one more creative energy cell, energy source, which goes here. And I've been very diligently sending the tier 10 missions, which means we have 38 hearts of the universe. Which means we can craft the first solar panel of infinity. Oh my goodness, these things are so expensive. <laughs> Five more to go. It's also going to take a little while to craft though. Yeah, I filled out a few more chaotic injectors here. I may have to add a few more of these setups though. Yeah, that took a solid 25 minutes to craft, something like that. Let's make sure to add it into these drawers right here. I have some locked drawers so that when we have vending, we can duplicate all of these things. Not that it really matters though, since when we have vending, that's basically the end of the game. This is going to go right here, and yeah, all we're actually missing here is five more solar panels, two energy sources, and two creative mills, I believe. The rest of the things we have in world already. All right, all right, one more creative mill about 30 minutes later. That's going to go here. You know what? Things are starting to speed up a little bit here. This is, I think, our last creative mill that we need. 1 hour 20 minutes has passed by and we have another creative energy source. Just one more of these things left to go and then it's all the solar panels. That's gonna take all day. <laughs> I don't know how long I can keep doing this. <laughs> Two more hours later. And we have our last energy cell right here. Energy source. Something I didn't think we would run into actually is the transfer rate on these conduits. So before we were only extracting from this set right here. And I noticed some power outages mainly in these solidifiers here. And after doing some digging, I realized that this conduit buffer wasn't actually filling up. We were using more power than we could extract from this thing. Still one year, 50 days to fill though, but yeah. So I had to switch this to an output as well. And of course we input from the energy phantom faces on the bottom. This is where things start to really slow down for us here. And I traced the bottleneck back to extraterrestrial matter for Dragon Lair data. So instead of using the crafting recipe, I actually expanded out our loot fabricators, adding 15 more for Dragon. We have a lot of pristines backed up because of the supercomputer, but we can always add more of those things if we need. Our issue is that we're just not fabricating it fast enough. So I'm hoping these additions is going to fix our problems here, including the addition of a level emitter on our projector. Instead of level emitting the tier 7 missions for Dragon Hearts, we instead make sure we have Dragon Lair data in the system. And so it was at four hours per solar panel. I knew that I was in for a very, very long night. <laughs> but this is it. This is all we have left. The final push for Vendon.
Added in one more large microverse projector just to decrease the craft times, and we got patterns in those for tier 7, 8, 9 and 10 missions. And every now and then able to fill in one more solar panel to our ultimate craft. But then I thought, you know what, one extra probably isn't going to be enough, so I built two more. So after another huge time skip, we're back in the place this all started. We're back in the Lost Cities Dimensions. I don't know why I'm opening chests. <laughs> no, we are here because we need a spawner again. Aha, just exactly what we're looking for right here. Yeah, so I just wanted another powered spawner right here. We apparently are out of sentient enders. Oh, and I made it an enderman spawner, not a witch spawner. <laughs> That's not right. So yeah, anyways, we're just missing one more solar panel of infinity. And I feel like this has taken the longest to craft. <laughs> I've added uh, two more full towers of fusion injector craft in here. I've also taken our wetware boards up to four processing arrays with 16 UV chemical reactors in them each, which is a lot of <laughs> a lot of board production here, and still it's one of our biggest bottlenecks here. There's a few other additions over here as well, like dilithium, we'd run out of that, and then we'd run out of tier 4 circuits, and then circuit boards, and then emitters. <laughs> so yeah, I've just been running around trying to put out fires the last few hours. I don't even know how long I've been since the last clip at this point. But yeah, we are currently at 5 hearts of a universe. I think it's 34 for the full solar panel. It's 37. Okay, so we, yeah, we're, we're missing around a half stack. Let's see how many tier 10s we can get. At this point, I'm sending them like 6 or 7 at a time. If we had some more chaos shards. Chaos shards depends on the guardian data. And here we can send them like 100 at a time. <laughs> so yeah, that's basically where we're at right now. I also built another supercomputer. Just to get some more extra terrestrial matter more than anything. Plus it also balances this area out so that they are symmetrical. Oh, this is taking a lot longer than I expected actually. I don't think we're going to make it before 12 days played. 7 to go. 7 here to go. <laughs> oh my goodness, this is, the, this is the end. This is it. Yep, 7 to go, but that's going to take me more than 15 minutes. I think it's maybe going to be closer to 45 minutes, yeah, to get the rest of these materials. Oh, we are so close though. 6 left. <laughs> Infinity solar panel. Here we go. <laughs> oh, it's craftable. Oh, what a week this has been. I did not expect to take this long. <laughs> this was way too much of a jump up for one episode, but we were committed. We were committed. And yeah, I think that was actually right around 45 minutes there. I guess all that's left to do is to collect our creative mill. Oh, I thought I couldn't break that there. <laughs> it needs the wrench. Okay, we got the creative mill. Let's give it some of these just to help speed this up a little bit. We've got like a thousand of these things to craft still. Here it is. The last solar panel. Let's collect the RF source and our AE energy cell, which is also in use. All right, so the solar panel, creative RF, creative energy cell, and the full set of infinity armor. Wow, we have it. <laughs> Screenshot time. And for the second time, we have the creative vending upgrade. Oh, we did it. We did it. <laughs> oh, I'm so happy right now. We actually got creative ending. You know what, though? I don't know if these drawers are accessible. Uh, kind of? Yeah, I didn't think about this, actually. Okay, that is disconnected down there. Yeah, we want to unlock the, this drawer right here, hopper in one of the vending upgrades, and then apply the vending upgrade. And we should have infinite of these things. Yes, perfect. Let's get our armor back. Well, I guess this is it. This is the end of Nomi Factory. We got the creative ending upgrade, finally. Once again, I really, really did enjoy this pack a lot, actually. Definitely, definitely recommend this if you're on the fence about Nomi Factory. It's definitely worth a shot. Make sure you pick up the dev version, though. But yeah, I guess our final time was 12 days, 56 minutes, something like that. I'll have to check the footage there. Honestly, though, in the end, I wasn't really worried about the time. Having fun was just the most important part, really. It was never meant to be. Not a speedrun. This is not a speedrun, remember? <laughs> But yeah, I want to thank you guys for watching. If, you, if you're interested in a world download, you can find that on Discord. It may not be available straight away, but I'll definitely have that up in the next few days. Huge thank you to the Patreons as well. I really appreciate you guys that you allow me to keep doing this. And you know, even though we weren't really paying attention to aesthetics, I kind of like the way that the base turned out, even if it is just a glorified lawn base. <laughs> Things ended up quite nice and neat, especially these assembly lines. I think that these look pretty cool. Things that I would definitely recommend to you guys is make sure you have robust fusion. This was a huge, huge bottleneck, and I would probably advise adding uh, a few more assembly lines as well. I was waiting on these. 
Also, make sure never to void any extraterrestrial matter. You're going to need lots and lots of this. I ran out of this so many times in the last 24 hours. <laughs> and processing rays. Make sure you make sure you leave a lot of space for these things. But yeah, I think that about wraps things up. I look forward to what's coming next. I hope you guys uh, consider joining us for the next series as well. But until then, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you all soon for the next adventure.